all right, man? <laughs> Shot me right off into that cactus. Dude, I didn't catch it. I just saw you down. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? All right. So while I'm out here riding with the boys, I figure I might as well do some vlogging. Moto vlogging, something I don't do much of because I can't really do this many things at one time very well. But, uh, man, I've got some video ideas that I've, I've been wanting to do, and I just, I, I write those scripts for the voiceovers, and it just gets so long, and, you know, the way people are on the internet nowadays, you gotta be so careful how you say things. Everything that you say is scrutinized or misinterpreted, and it doesn't matter what you meant, that's what people are gonna think. The internet is like love hate, man. Totally love hate. Whoa, Joe, you gotta pay attention to what you're doing while you're talking. And I'm about I'm about to get into some controversial stuff because I belong to a group, a Facebook group, uh, you know, for guys who ride the 500 either the Husky version or the KTM version. And it's a really cool resource for like, you got something wrong, man, there's, you know, I don't know, a thousand other guys with your bike in there who might have had the same problem or found a really easy solution to something you're going through. Man, there's a lot of cactus here. I ain't about that today. So it's this great resource and, I, and I'm, 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 I'm actually like, I was loving it. And then one day, there was something about some guy posting a picture of a beta in the forum got kicked out, which I was totally okay with. But then it was like, it was kicked out with like malice. <laughs> like people were just angry. You know, maybe I misunderstood that, but it was, it was response to somebody who said something about, you know, like there's so much crap talking on, on forums or something. And I kind of responded, yeah, the brand loyalty thing is ridiculous. People should just be, happy for each other riding dirt bikes, you know, and, uh, no, they didn't see it that way. But they were, they were ready to kick me out of that group, and it, and it was because I said you sh shouldn't be brand loyal. It's like it's not about the bike, it's about the brand. You know, uh, for instance, I love, I love my KTM 500 UC. Yeah. There was a, there was a better bike that had better features or whatever that I wanted. I wouldn't hesitate to go to a different bike. No, I don't care who pays it. Here's a perfect example. I really like that electric dirt bike. KTM makes an electric dirt bike. It is no competition for this Alta Redshift thing. Not not yet, at least. I mean, you can see what's going on there. You just do a little bit of research. Alta is head and shoulders above the rest. I don't owe KTM anything. We don't owe these brands anything. Unless they gave you the bike or they're sponsoring you, you don't owe them jack. I, I, I mean, it's like a funny term to even say, brand loyalty. What do you owe them? Are they hooking you up? Not charging you for your bike? Are they expecting to make a profit off of you? It is really hard to do a moto vlog in this crap and try to keep my thoughts straight and not end up on the ground. I don't want to scratch my new plastics. Anyways. And that kind of go, brings me to my next point. I was gonna bring that up, the new graphics. So as some of you guys have seen, or noticed, I've got some new graphics on the bike. Um, it was looking pretty bad. And uh, the handwritten names on the, on the fender were just really shoddy. Um, so I wanted to make my bike a little bit more recognizable. You know that's Joe Rockstar. You guys are, if I'm switching between points of view or something, or 
somebody feels me going by on a race, it's easy to pick out which one was me. When I go places, people know it's, it's me. I am really struggling today. Uh, anyways, so I got these new graphics um, and I designed them myself. Uh, it's, it's really cool that uh, MotoCal, this company has this website that just lets you blank canvas it, man, and make it the way you want. And they have so many tools for you to design with. And it's fun as hell. Um, when I started doing it, I really was just doing it kind of for fun to see what it would look like. And by the time I was done, I was like, man, this, this makes sense. It's branding. It, it makes sense for the Joe Rockstar channel to make, make my bike look legit. And it makes sense to get my sponsor's names on the bike looking a little more legit. I went ahead and ordered them. And man, they came out great. But one of the things, like if you were to look at my bike up close, you are not going to see anything that says KTM on it that isn't stamped into the metal. You know, because KTM ain't paying me to advertise for their bike. You know, even though I put it in the title sometimes, and I do that, you know, obviously people want to see it. They're looking for a KTM 500. I want them to come and watch my videos and see, you know, how cool the bike is. That benefits me. Having stickers on my bike from a company that has not done anything to support me does not benefit me doesn't benefit my viewers and that goes for <coughs> everything else too there's no fox stickers or cd stickers or, or cherubis or however you say it <laughs> uh none of that stuff on it but these guys are sponsoring me i see some guys probably put them on there because it, it looks cool you know if you think it looks cool, that's cool, I guess. If that's what you want to do, that's up to you, man. Me, personally, I don't think it looks that cool because if you're not being sponsored and everybody knows it, I don't know, kind of like wearing a military uniform or something when you're not in the military. I don't, I don't know. For me, personally, it's just not going to happen. Oh my God, I'm riding like such a sissy. All right, we got to stop talking for a little while so I can try to catch up with these guys. these cactuses. I don't want to have nothing to do with that today. Hee <laughs> hee! Yeah, dude, I'm just cruising it, man. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm talking to the camera, so I'm slow as shit. That's tight stuff, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'm talking to the camera, and that's why I'm so slow today. <laughs> but here's the thing. So I, I, I say these things about, you know, you, you're not being sponsored while you're putting stickers on your bike from another company. And I don't mean it like, I don't mean it to like insult somebody or talk crap to them. And I don't, and I don't want to make anybody defensive. I'm just saying like, these guys, they owe you something <laughs> if you're going to advertise for them. Even if you're not making YouTube videos, everybody sees your bike. You know, and we all like to go, oh man, I put on the latest this, that, or the other. And I'm not sure what that's about. You know, like, is it, is it the pride of ownership? Because, I mean, I'm sure a lot of it's the pride of ownership. You know, or keeping up with the Joneses, or look what I got. You don't. But I mean, the difference between having something and not having it a lot of the times, it's just money. So are you advertising that you've got money that they don't have? That's rude. <laughs> if you're, if that's your reasoning, that's pretty bad. But, but I think a lot of it comes from something that maybe a lot of us don't want to admit. Because I did it at the beginning. Hell, I had, I showed off this KTM all the time, and it wasn't, it wasn't about the money. It was like validation, and I think that's what a lot of people do. You know, 
They're looking for some kind of validation. Or they subconsciously, not intentionally, I don't think anybody's like some kind of like drama queen or something, but I do feel like we seek out validation. And that when somebody doesn't validate us, like let's say they go against us and they go, oh, you got a KCM, you should have got a Yamaha. Man, what is that about? Like without being asked, waste your money, you know? But hey, why would you even, why would that matter to you? It's their money to waste, you know? Anyways, so it seems like sometimes people get like mad that they didn't make, that somebody's making a different decision than you. You know, like as if they're not, they're not making that same decision invalidates in some way the decision you made. It's all, it's all cool, you know, when it's just, you know, friendly ribbon and joking around. But I've heard guys get really heated up about this stuff, you know? We shouldn't act like a bunch of putzes to other riders who choose a different brand or a different type of bike. Just be happy that we got more people riding. And the more people that ride, the stronger we are as a segment of the population that, that has to uh, endure bureaucracy that tries to stop us from having a place to go do this fun stuff, you know? And then on top of that, somebody's probably trying to shut it down. Um, and that's just crap, you know? Like, we've got, we got to kind of lean on each other a little bit. to have like a united front and when it comes to brand loyalty that's not so much of a problem I get you know for that like toward towards those ends it starts to go into how you treat other people it, it, maybe they're not bikers maybe it has nothing to do with dirt bikes it just has to do with the way that you treat other human beings that you disagree with there's somebody watching this video like basically like doesn't give a crap about what I'm talking about. Not only doesn't give a crap, but totally is like against it. Like, but there are some people who are totally dedicated to this sport, not just for their own gain. Like they enjoy it, of course, themselves, but they're also in it to improve it for everybody who's got a bike and wants to get out and ride. So they spend their time, I mean their time, that's like the biggest one of all, right? They spend their time to organize, to pay attention to what's going on with legislation, to keep people in the know, all while also mapping great places to ride, taking others out that are less skilled than them. I mean, it might be a boring ride for them, but they'll do it anyway to introduce new riders, into the sport, show them around. And it's like, Jesus, you know, that's such a small percentage of us that are doing stuff like that. And then you got guys who, you know, at least join the club, support the AMA, and they're willing to send out one of those chain emails to a congressman once in a while when they get it in their email. And it says, hey, send this out. They're trying to shut us down. And a lot of those guys, if you're anything like me, because that's kind of where I'm at, show up to a meeting once in a while, pay my dues, you know, and try to be conscious of what's going on and, and help out when I'm asked. Um, if that's the best you can do, it's better than nothing. So maybe instead of trying to keep up with the Joneses, most clubs probably like less than $50 a year. A year. Set a little aside. If you can't do anything else, get pay your dues and, and get money to those guys that are willing to fight. 
George Y. Sokols or the Gary Meekers of the biking community. You know, and I mentioned those two guys because they're TRS members who've done a hell of a lot. I mean, these guys like foster relationships with the Forest Service. Work on getting projects approved to actually put trails in. Like, I didn't even know if that was possible in this day and age to get a trail put in. pretty hard to make sure that you've got that place that you're riding at to ride at. Anyways, that's all for now. Yeah, Timmy.